All right, guys, so this story right here is wild. This is wild. So this was originally in the Washington Post. I'm reading it in MSN. A first, Category 5 storms have formed in every ocean basin this year. And you can see their names. This one's Freddie, Southwest Indian Ocean. This one is Kevin, Southwest Pacific Ocean. What does that say? Ilsa, which is Australian. Mocha, which is North Indian. Mawar, which is Northwest Pacific. Jova, which is Northeast Pacific. And then Lee, which is in the Atlantic. Uh, I That thing is roaring out there, man. And we're just hoping it doesn't make landfall anywhere on the eastern coast of the U.S. So they say, for the first time on record, storms have reached top top tier Category 5 strength in every tropical ocean basin in the same year. A combination of human-caused climate change and El Nino have heated ocean waters to record levels in 2023, setting the stage for this meteorological feat. The Copernicus Climate Service of the European Union confirmed that global ocean, the global ocean reached its warmest levels on record in August. Let's just pause and reflect on this here for a second. This is wild. So as a result of climate change and El Nino put together, it's literally the warmest the ocean waters have ever been on record. That's like, it's, it's hard to wrap your mind around that, right? I mean, we've been around for a while. <laughs> the records, you know, go back quite a bit. And it's like, hey, this is the worst ever. And this is a first. Category 5 hurricanes, all these different places, this is a first. This week alone, two tropical cyclones leaped to Category 5 intensity in two days. Hurricane Jova in the northeastern Pacific on Wednesday, closely followed by Hurricane Lee in the Atlantic on Thursday. The pair of storms intensified with astonishing haste. Their peak winds increased, increasing 90 miles per hour and 85 miles per hour, respectively, in 24 hours. So let me pause on this. Guys, this is what's called rapid intensification. The thing that fuels hurricanes is warm ocean water. And since the ocean water is the warmest it's literally ever been, what you're seeing is this rapid intensification where these storms are going from, like, tropical storm to Category 5 hurricane in the time span of two days. This is unheard of. This never happened before. Meteorologists monitor seven tropical ocean basins around the world for storm development. In addition to the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific, Category 5 storms formed in the the other five basins earlier this year, Brian McNoldy, a tropical weather expert at the University of Miami, confirmed that 2023 marked the first instance of Category 5 storms in all seven and linked it to the warm waters. Quote, I think it's reasonable to hypothesize that the abnormally warm ocean temperatures around the world made this more likely to happen, McNoldy said in an email. Gives everything a boost. Waters are warmer than normal almost everywhere, helping storms intensify quickly even in areas in which storm activity is often reduced during El Nino because of hostile high-altitude winds. By the way, let me also pause to point out, there was a tropical storm that hit L.A. Uh, not that long ago. It was like a couple weeks ago. And um, tropical storms gener generally do not form at all in the Pacific. The Pacific over there by California, it is uh, the water there is much cooler than the water on the um, East Coast. And so, for my whole lifetime, there's never been a tropical storm like that that has come from the Pacific. And so, when it hit, I read an article that said it was like the first one in 85 years or something like that. So, tropical storms don't happen in the Pacific. And we just had one in the Pacific. That is a big change. It's almost like the climate is changing. Call me crazy. In an El Nino year, the, the strong storms in the Pacific are not surprising, but the Atlantic would be the basin that's highly unlikely to pull its weight and produce a five, said Alex Des, Des Rose, Rosaires, a tropical weather researcher at Colorado State University. The record warm sea surface temperatures we are seeing in regions of the tropical and subtropical Atlantic are key in allowing for the a active hurricane season we've had so far, uh, despite the usually prohibitive El Nino. Oh, so that's interesting. So El Nino usually prohibits hurricane development? On, in the Atlantic? Well, it ain't happening this year. So, everything I read is that the forecast for this hurricane season is that there's going to be at least five major hurricanes. And that's just for this region right here. So, um, look, man, this is, this is some devastating stuff. I don't know how much more evidence I can give you to make the case. It just seems like we're at the point now where it's like everybody who already knows climate change is real is going to acknowledge climate change is real. And there's going to be some segment of the population, for whatever reason, that denies it, and they're going to continue to deny it. The, the saving grace is that the majority of the American public now knows it's definitely real. Uh, but there is a massive propaganda effort. Uh, the Republican Party, uh, across the board, 
seemingly downplays or outright denies climate change. You have this whole network of junk scientists. The same people, by the way, who funded the so-called scientists who argued, oh, cigarettes don't cause cancer. A lot of these same people are now out there saying humans don't cause climate change. And so there's a well-funded effort brought about by big oil, the fossil fuel industry, to downplay and deny the impacts of climate change and act like we can't do anything about it. And the public is already on the right side of this. Um, Democratic politicians know it's real. They're taking, like, baby steps in the right direction. More on that later, by the way. There's a story on that I have later. But, like, we're not addressing this with the urgency that's needed. You know, well, I think when Bernie ran, he said something like, we need a World War II level mobilization to combat climate change, get us off of fossil fuels, move towards green and renewable technology. Now, look, you know, of course, you have to do it in a reasonable and intelligent way. You can't destroy the economy in, in the process of trying to uh, bring about green and renewable technology. But look, that's the point, is that this is a potential economic uh, benefit, that we can get the patents for the technology that's going to be the next generation of energy. And we just need to focus on it. We just need to dedicate ourselves to it. As part of the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, um, there was a lot of stuff in there that was on this exactly. So we have a lot of green and renewable technology jobs that are coming back to this country now and, you know, battery factories and uh, microchip stuff. And it's billions and billions of dollars uh, to rebuild our manufacturing base in this country and gear it towards green and renewable technology. And that's certainly positive. There's 800,000 manufacturing jobs that are coming back. That's great. But look, that's just the beginning. Like, you know, I don't, I don't know how quickly, if we really dedicate ourselves, we can make the transition. But I think just based on with the current technology we have, we could make a colossal shift in like five years where the overwhelming majority of our energy comes from clean and renewable sources. And look, I think that's necessary at this late date. So this is a wild story. I hope it wakes people up, but not to be uh, pessimistic here. But I think if you aren't woken up by this point, I don't know what will wake you up, because certainly the anecdotal experience of everybody is now matching the empirical data, and um, we got to turn the ship around, that's for sure. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.